Hi, this is Mr. Tegmeyer, and this is part two of the introduction to electricity. In this part, I'm assuming that you've covered, of course, part one, which is the atomic theory and understand it. And in this part, we're going to talk about some of the mathematical relationships or the equations for electricity. Specifically, we're going to talk about Ohm's law. So let's get started. Well, Ohm's law talks about, uh, speaks to electrical circuits. So a circuit is really just a system of different components that make a complete path for electrical current to travel. And when we talk about electrical circuits, there are three things that we really care about. One is voltage, uh, which is measured by uh, the units of volts, and it has the symbol V. The second thing is current, and current is measured with amps, and that is the symbol A. And then finally, resistance is in ohms, and there you see the little horseshoe, which is actually the Greek symbol omega. So first, let's talk about current. Current is really just the uh, flow of electrons. And in this slide, we talk about uh, an example of a tank and a pipe and a faucet. And I like to use water to make an analogy for electricity because water is something that we know. We, ex we use it every day. And it's easy to make a connection between something that we know and electrons, which is really something that we can't see. So we're going to use water as an example to make some connections. So when we talk about uh, a hose, let's say, it doesn't have to be a, a tank and a pipe, uh, but most of us have used a hose to water the plants, water grass, wash a car, or whatever. And um, you can think of the pipe, in this case, as a hose. But let's take a look at this system. And if we have uh, this, the switch, in this case a faucet, if it's turned off, you know, the question here is, is there anything flowing? And the answer, of course, is no. And if we turn it on, well, then we have flow and we have current. And the same thing can be said for electricity. Well, how does that actually work in a circuit? Well, this is a real simplified uh, version of a circuit. You have a, a battery, which is like the tank that we had in the last slide. And we have a switch, which is a lot like the uh, faucet. And we've also introduced uh, a light bulb, which I'll get to here in a little bit. And the wire simulates the, the pipe. So here we have the switches off and there's no current. But when we turn the switch on, viola, the light turns on. Okay, that, that's really not rocket science, something we would expect, right? Well, a lot of words on this slide, and I think it can just be described as uh, two different ways to look at how current flows. And scientists look at it one way, and engineers look at it in another way. So if you take a look at the top diagram, uh, you see a basically a wire diagram. It doesn't have any elements except for a battery. And the battery is denoted by the two different line lengths, and it has a plus and a minus sign. The plus being the positive uh, pole, and the minus being the negative pole. And the conventional current flows from positive to negative. But in reality, electrons actually flow from negative to positive, which kind of makes sense when you think about um, the atomic theory in the fact that electrons have a negative charge and they are attracted by positive charge. So that's why we have the true electron flow going that way. But the way we're going to look at things is differently than the way science looks at it. Science looks at it um, as the true electron flow and they analyze circuits that way. We're going to analyze circuits using the conventional current or flowing from positive to negative. And the reality is it doesn't really matter as long as you, whatever you choose, you stay consistent. So let's get back to our uh, tank. So we looked at current, let's take a look at voltage. So remember we had the three things, voltage, current, and resistance. 
So voltage, you can think of when you think of water, and you think of a hose, and you put your thumb over the end of the hose. You don't have anything else on the end of a hose controlling the spray. It's just a hose without anything on it. And you put your thumb over it, and the more you put your thumb over that opening, the more pressure you feel. And in terms of current, electrical current, that's kind of how you can think of voltage. Voltage is really kind of the pressure. So when we have the, the switch off, is there any pressure in there? Yes, actually there is. There is pressure against the piping. The pipe feels the pressure. So the same thing occurs in uh, electrical circuit. Even if the circuit <coughs> excuse me, isn't complete, in other words, if the switch is turned off, there's still pressure in there or there's still voltage. And then, of course, when we turn it on, there's still voltage again. Well, let's take another look at this circuit. So the battery provides some of the voltage. And then when we turn the switch on, obviously the light comes on. Finally, let's take a look at resistance. So if we put a rock in the, the pipe, or if we take the hose, using the hose example, and we bend the hose, not so that uh, we completely shut off the water, but that we just restrict its flow. So what happens is, if we put a rock in there, or a kink, watch the animation here, it really restricts the flow. Or we can say that the current goes down. That kind of makes sense, right? So more resistance, a higher resistance, means you have a higher value for ohms. So in this circuit, the light bulb it simulates a rock. It has resistance. It offers resistance to the electrons. So when we uh, turn it on, the light bulb simulates the rock and creates that resistance. So now how do we put that together in some sort of relationship? The Ohm's law is expressed by what you see up top in italics, and it says current in a resistor varies in direct proportion to the voltage applied, and it's inversely proportional to the resistor value. Well, typically Ohm's law is written in equation form as V equals IR. And if you kind of look at it and compare that to the words above, Eh, it doesn't really, that's not the best way to write it. It can also be written as, it's the same equation, I equals VR. And this, this way is uh, compared directly to what's written above. So if you look at this equation, if I keep the resistance constant, in other words, I don't change how big that rock is, or I don't change how big the kink is in my hose, if that stays the same, if I increase the pressure, or if I increase the voltage, my current goes up. They're in direct relationship. Let's use another example. If I keep my pressure the same or my voltage the same and I change the resistance, if my resistance goes up, in other words I put a bigger rock in there or I, or I squeeze the hose more, I add more resistance. If I add more resistance, my current or my flow goes down. Well, here's kind of a nifty way to uh, remember Ohm's Law. And it's Ohm's Law chart. You don't have to remember this. This is just kind of a neat way to do it. So here's how I use this. If I want to solve for V, I cover up the V. And then I have V equals I times R. Similarly, if I want to know what the current is, I cover up the I. And I have... I equals V over R. And you can see the, uh, the slash there. That's kind of a, a neat way to say V over R, I guess. And then lastly, if I want to solve for resistance, I cover up the R. I put another slash in between the V and the I. And I get resistance equals voltage over current. Well, let's look at an example. So here we have a flashlight. Uh, the flashlight has a 6 volt battery in it and we know that the light bulb has a resistance of 150 ohms. 
But what we want to know is how much current there is that's drawn by the battery. The first thing we do is we draw a picture. Um, here we, you see it's called a schematic diagram. Some people call it a wire diagram. Each one is their interchangeable terms. A couple things that I want you to notice here. We've seen the, the symbol for voltage or for a battery and those are the on the left hand side you see a long line and a short line and a long line and a short line and then we write the values in V sub T is just V total and you see that's 6 volts that indicates our 6 volt battery and then we have straight lines and then the squiggly line on the right hand side it has 150 the little horseshoe that's ohms 150 ohms but there's also a voltage across that. So we call that voltage V sub R. So that's the voltage across that resistor. Finally, you see the blue arrow, which indicates the direction of the current flow. Because remember, for a battery or a voltage source, the long line at the top indicates the positive terminal, and then the negative terminal is just the short line. But we want to know how much current there is. So if we take our, our little diagram and we cover up I, we know that I equals V over R. And here you can see that equation. And we plug in our values. We have 6 volts divided by 150 ohms. And we get 0 0.04 amps. A is amps. Now, typically, the, a better way to write that is, and a more conventional way to write it, what, the way I expect you to write it, and know it is 40 milliamps. The little m is milla. And it's just like you would know, uh, just like you know millimeters or milliliters. Milla meaning one thousandth of something. So here we have 40 thousandths of an amp, which is 0 0.04. And then finally, uh, a two laws that I do expect you to know. And we're going to go over what these mean in the next couple of presentations. So the first law is Kirchhoff's voltage law. And that says the sum of all voltage drops in a series circuit equals the total voltage applied. And we'll get to what that means. Second one is Kirchhoff's current law. That says that the total current in a parallel circuit equals the sum of the individual branch circuits. So you can see we're adding things up here, but a couple of things I want to point out. Kirchhoff's voltage law applies to, obviously, voltage. And Kirchhoff's current law applies to uh, circuits that are parallel, and it talks about current only. Uh, the thing about voltage law that you need to know is that it's a series circuit. And the thing about current law is it applies to parallel circuits. And that is that wraps up part two of the introduction to electricity.